the spin is different. The Earth rotates on its axis like so. If you look down from the north, north pole up here, there's an axis running right through the middle and it punctures through the sphere at the north pole and the south pole. Again, everything, something that goes back to early childhood learning. It rotates in the counterclockwise direction as looking down from the north. That means stars in the sky appear to move in the clockwise direction, in the opposite direction. It's rather amazing the number of people who don't realize that the stars rise and set just like the sun. The sun comes up more or less in the east. It sets more or less in the west. Everybody's familiar with that. But watch the stars. They'll do the same thing. They take 360 degree, go around 360 degrees in 24 hours. That's about a degree in four minutes. So you see a little shift. Go on outside some night, go look at a star. Wait four minutes, you see it shift by a full degree. You don't even have to sit around and wait. Go in and watch television, come on back and look, and it will certainly have shifted its position. Reflections of the spinning Earth. Aha, but is it the Earth that's spinning, or is the sky this crystal globe around us? And is it the sky that's spinning? That's a little harder to determine. Pythagoras, oh, in ancient times, suggested that maybe it was the earth that was spinning and we actually saw the motion in the sky as the reflection of the earth, but he wasn't believed. We actually didn't nail it down until the 1600s, surprisingly enough. Although there were inklings of people, yeah, but Aristotle, the great thinkers, it's too big to move. Look at the size of it. Go on outside. How can it move? Besides, the argument was that if the earth were spinning, think of the wind that would be blowing out there. It would knock you down without, of course, realizing that the atmosphere is spinning at the same speed as the Earth, and consequently, you don't feel this tremendous wind. Everything is moving along together. We can prove it now, as far as you can prove any scientific theory, of course, but the Earth is spinning in this direction, and what does that have to do with the sky? We've got the North Pole, we got the South Pole. In between, we've got the equator. The equator is where the Earth is spinning fastest. We know that it's 8,000 miles across, 13,000 kilometers across. It's 25,000 miles around in 24 hours. The equator spinning at around 1,000 miles an hour, about 1,600 miles an hour. You don't notice that because everything's moving together. When I, was, when I was little, I thought that I could, gee, if the Earth is spinning, I can jump up in the air. It'll, it'll move under me, and I'll, I'll land over here. I, I tried that a couple of times until it realized, no, no, it, it doesn't work that way when we realize we're all moving together. That was actually an early argument against the spinning Earth. We have to find out where we are on this planet. As you drive from New York to Chicago or from any two points, it's not hard. You follow a map, you follow guidelines, but try to do that out here in the middle of the ocean. There's no X marks the spot. How do you know where you are? The only way you know where you are is by looking at the stars by looking at their locations at a given time, and that will tell you where you are. It's a very dangerous place because there's no guidelines, there's no streets, there's no markings. And if you go in the wrong direction, you and your crew could easily die. So we have to have a way of marking position on the Earth, and we do it with a very simple grid of latitude and longitude. Very simple. You start at the equator. You call that zero degrees. You go up to 90 degrees, a quarter of the circle, up to here at the North Pole, and you call that 90 degrees north. And you go down in this direction, you call that 90 degrees south. And then it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on right on up. Uh, most of the central U.S. is uh, ranges from about 30 to 50 degrees north latitude or so. You go down to South America, 30, 40, 50 degrees south latitude. Very simple concept. Longitude is measured in the other direction is measured around the equator, like so. Latitude, the beginning is easy because you start at the equator and you go north and you go south. You've got a physical reference, the spin of the Earth. Longitude, you don't. You've got to, where do you start it? Where do you start it? Well, to get a longitude, what we do is draw a circle from the North Pole. Pick a city, Kansas City, perhaps. Draw a circle through Kansas City, crossing the equator to the South Pole and you see where it crosses the equator. Now what you do is you need a zero point on the equator, and what are we going to use? Well, we could use a mountain, I suppose, but we have to find something that everybody agrees on. 
And what we have agreed on is to take a circle that starts at the North Pole, goes through Greenwich, England, and crosses the equator to the South Pole, and where you have that intersection, you call that zero, and you measure the angle along the equator from this so-called Greenwich meridian to the meridian, the north-south line, through your location at home. Why Greenwich? Well, England was the big sea power when all of this was being set up. You don't have to use Greenwich. The French used Paris, but England was the sea power, and they said, it's going to go here, and it went there. Completely arbitrary, and we've used it for the last few hundred years that way.